Seems like every few months I end up making a new video on the New York Knicks. Because while they haven't been in playoff contention the past few seasons, they're always doing something that is either entertaining or interesting or perplexing, to say the least. And as crazy as the last few years for the Knicks have been, weirdly enough, I think their future isn't terrible at the moment. It's not one to marvel at, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world either, so we can talk about it. Uh, the first thing I actually want to talk about is just the fact that Phil Jackson's gone. Because Phil, he just made a lot of bad moves. I mean, yeah, he drafted Perzingis, and you should be given credit for that one. And he did acquire Hernan Gomez, which was good. But outside of those two, I mean, the money he gave to Joe Kim Noah, the way he just traded Tyson Chandler for Jose Calderon, which just wasn't smart, the way that he traded both Shumpert and J.R. Smith in the same move when he could have got assets back for both of them. And these are just the moves I can remember off the top of my head. And then, of course, there was the dealing of Carmelo Anthony as well as Porzingis, where Phil Jackson tried to run Melo out of town, which is just about as unprofessional and immature as you can possibly be, on top of the whole rumor about how he was willing to trade Porzingis or whatever. I don't know how much legitimacy there was in that, but the idea of that even being a slight conversation that was had for more than two seconds... That's a scary thought. So it's good that Phil Jackson's just gone. And if we can talk about the new general manager for this team, Scott Perry. He seems like a guy who actually doesn't suck. I was looking over some news articles when he was with the Kings, which, if I'm not mistaken, he wasn't on the Kings for that long. But one mentality that he was going to carry with Sacramento was building through the draft and embracing young guys and taking the slower route and not going for the quick fix by making trades and stuff which is exactly what the Knicks need they need a general manager who's more about the the grind of building up an NBA team and sure it might be a longer wait but typically it means better results for a team that will last just longer and the fact that they sign him to a five-year deal I think that's a good sign it gives him some security to know that he can just make some moves and he can build this team up the way he wants to. Now hopefully James Dolan doesn't fire him because James Dolan fires people left and right. But Dolan has also said that he's just kind of staying out of the day-to-day -day basketball operations. Which is a good sign because James Dolan is a quack job. If we look at the Knicks from a draft pick perspective, they have all of their first round picks moving forward. So you have a general manager who's willing to do this the long way which is typically the better way, and you have all your first round picks, I'd say that's a good sign. Also, let's talk about Jeff Hornacek. Now that Hornacek is the head coach without Phil Jackson pressuring him to run the triangle or whatever the hell, I think Hornacek can be pretty good. The guy was a good coach in Phoenix when they were winning games when no one thought they were going to, mainly just a pick and roll heavy offense with um, Dragic and when Eric Bledsoe was playing, and it actually worked out. Now, I wouldn't say the Knicks really have the pick-and-roll point guard to make that work right now, but I've seen Hornacek be a good coach in the past, so I think he could be a good coach for these guys. If we get to that point guard position now, I mean, Frank Nielakina, I mean, I'll just be honest, I would have selected Dennis Smith over him. I'm sure everyone in the world has said that, and I'm going to agree with that one. Doesn't mean Nielakina can't be good. I mean, he's supposed to be a defensive player, a three-point shooter, and these are things that are valuable in today's NBA, but the comparison he's been getting is to the point guard that I mention in every video, so I'm not going to mention him here, but you know what I'm going to say. Uh, it rhymes with storage Jill. I mean, that's nice, but like, that's typically not the type of dude that you're going to want running your offense, so either Neil Aquina can grow into that, we're just going to have to see. I don't know if Neil Aquina is actually going to start in his rookie season, it's interesting. You could make the argument that he should, because if he doesn't, I don't know who the hell starts at point guard, because, like, Ramon Sessions isn't that good. Ron Baker isn't that good. And there's really no other obvious point guard option. Like, I could understand not starting him if you had a veteran in front of him who was a legit good point guard who could lead you to some wins right now. 
there's no one there. So, you're probably gonna lose anyway. Why don't you just put the young kid in there and see what he's got. Now, maybe you don't want to overwhelm him too quickly. Maybe you want to play him about 20 minutes a game off the bench. I can see the rationale on that as well. But I wouldn't be surprised if maybe midway into the season he's starting for these guys. So that's something for you. Uh, let's get into Mello. I don't know if this dude's going to actually get traded. Houston is going to try to find a third team. I just don't know if all three teams are going to get enough assets to where a move could actually happen. I mean, if you're the Knicks, I would try as hard as possible to not have to actually give up anything else in a move like this. Don't pull a Chicago and just throw like the 16th pick into a trade where you're already giving up Jimmy Butler. I mean, it'd probably have to be a situation where like, I don't know, Mello ends up on Houston. Houston sends some stuff to the third team. Third team sends a bunch of stuff to the Knicks. Maybe Houston and the third team sends a bunch of stuff to the Knicks. I don't know. Also, given his age and just where he is as a player at this point, Mello's stock, I mean, it's probably not that high. Do I think you could get at least one first round pick and maybe a couple of young dudes to feel good about? Yeah, potentially. But you're not going to get some big haul that's going to put you on the perfect path of a rebuild. But who knows, man? I mean, if, if he's going to get traded it's got to happen this season because he's got an early termination after this year and we have to assume that he would terminate his contract i know that they've said they don't want to buy him out i think there's a chance that could still happen because i mean i don't know do you want him there still for this entire season given everything that's happened and i'm sure he's not thinking too highly of the knicks organization at this point it just might be one of those black cloud elephants in the room sort of deals that maybe you just want to get rid of through a buyout. So they just got to figure it out with the Carmelo Anthony situation. I guess I can talk about Perzingis. He's Perzingis. I expect him to just keep on getting better. I really wish he had a point guard who could help him out right now. If they had some sort of a veteran who could play over um, Neil Aquina, like I mentioned. Someone who's a better playmaker, not Derrick Rose, because Derrick Rose... Barely passed the ball to Przingis with his four assists a game. But even still, I think the Zinger is going to have himself a fine third season for these guys. Now, the money situation, depending on what happens with Carmelo Anthony, it's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, the Joe Kim Noah contract is still a thing, and I don't love the Tim Hardaway contract because I just think it's an overpay. I think you could have got him for a lot less money. I also don't think he really fixes what these guys need, which is defense. Pretty much just an offensive player, but whatever. He's also not really like a guy who can create that much. Yeah, he was a little better ball handling wise as it went along with the, the Hawks this year, but I don't think he's a guy who's going to be making a lot of plays for this team, but whatever, he's on the team. But still, if Melo is just not on the team next season as in the 2019 season, you could have around 30-something million dollars in cap space, which I don't think they'd be able to use on like a free agent or anything, because I don't know who the hell wants to go to this mess right now. But it just gives you more options, you know, make a trade or... I mean, you could probably sign some under-the-radar free agents. When I'm saying like who would want to go here, I mean more of a star player, you know. So, yeah, all I'm saying is it hasn't been pretty for the Knicks the past couple of seasons but in the present moment you have a GM who seems to have his head on straight Phil Jackson's gone Jeff Hornacek to me is still a pretty good coach when he's given the reins to a team you got Przingis you have all your first round picks moving forward it's not that bad now they could screw it up with some bad moves but I'd like to think that Scott Perry knows what he's doing enough to know what a good move and a bad move is, and we'll just have to see what happens.